Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have adult film star Natalia Starr. Um, we discuss uh, new adult toys, the metaverse, when we need therapy, working in the adult in entertainment with your sister, um, trying to heal yourself while working in adult films, and uh, yo, this is a this was a hottie. Don't forget yeah. to please help us with the Patreon, dog. Please. It um it keeps us doing what we're doing. If you like what we're yeah. doing, and uh, people and always say you changed my life, please help us out so we can keep doing this, man. Yeah, um, and also, I mean, we give you bonus content on there. That's where we're doing the listener mail and bonus episodes, and like today's bonus episode where we continue with Natalia Star and we uh you know continue and talk about more ways to heal yourself, uh, how she's trying to move on from adult films and. Uh, you know how to tell your friends that they're messing up and also the importance of, of understanding your value and, and she's a great example of understanding your value and what happens when you don't understand your value so yeah. uh you know enjoy the show everybody i'm not an alpha male i'm not a beta male either i'm just a better man better man well, put your happiness first because if you don't they won't yo 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 what up gybb get your balls back WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, we got a special show now. I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I really mean it. Harry, how you doing? You ready to doing rock and good, roll? Doing good, man. Doing good. You know me. I'm bo uh, born ready. What? Yeah. What are you talking about? What? I'm okay. out in the streets. Uh, <laughs> is that what the kids are saying? I, they do say that. They outside. They you outside. outside. You outside. Remember when All kids right. didn't want to go outside? Now they just they now only they, they only want to go they outside. They only want they only want to go outside. Uh you wanna do uh we got a special guest, you wanna do our uh introduction today? That's please? right. Uh adult film star extraordinaire and and now uh ha has her own sex toy. Uh I mean that's legendary status. Natalia Starr, everybody, give it up. Yeah. What's going on, Natalia? How you doing? Hey guys, thank well, you so much for having me on the show. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, thanks, thanks for having it. Thanks for doing this. Um, you are promoting something today. Uh, let's get into that real quick. Cover that right <laughs> up front. Yeah, I have um, a personalized sex toy and I think it's perfect for relationships because it is compatible with another toy that I actually have in my closet. All right, Bring oh, okay. it out the closet. Um, Okay, here we go. Get out the closet, reveal. Natalia. Yeah. <laughs> this is a big reveal here. I like this. Now yeah. I want to find out how one goes about getting uh, your own. <laughs> okay, I found your... it. Cool. All right, there we go. So this is uh, the key peon, and this is compatible with this. Okay. And basically, if you you two partners have it, so the woman would have a special dildo, like the the couple. Right. And then the man would have this, and if they're traveling, seeing each other separately, this the sex toy connects with the, the toy, so it's perfect for travel. No, let me ask. Their long distance relationships, and it also pairs to my videos. Mm -hmm. So I have a bunch of videos out online, and it will literally pair to the exact rhythm of that video. So no. that's like the like the new aspect about it that it's. Um, it's, it pairs with a lot you know, of different videos. Wow, that's that's so. Wait, they've synced up the video to the pairing of this thing. So yeah, we can... have to have this thing. Yeah, so like if you watch a video of me, you could like it will like pulsate to the exact motions that I was I'm making in the video. Nice. So it feels Same. very uh, interactive, and you can also use it for couples because there's also sex toys that are compatible with that. So if the partner is using the toy. The other partner will feel it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Oh wow! Okay, so it's synced up. See, why is Elon Musk not talking about this instead of going, <laughs> this to, is the going kind of, into the space? This is the technology we need. Yeah, no one cares uh, about all that. He goes trying to, to Mars. He we don't need electric Mars. cars. You know, let me ask. Can I ask you this? I um, have an electric does, car. Does this um, sync up in the metaverse? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I bet this was a. Uh, I bet it would. It has. I. I sense it says right here. Sticks up with Pornhub. Is Pornhub on the metaverse yet? Right. And if Pornhub has their own like big ass strip club kind of like situation. So maybe. this is. Cra have I you? Mean, this have, would be a perfect place for that. Have you yeah, done any of that? Have you uh, done any? Of, because here's what's here's what's interesting. I've been bugging. I wanted to talk about this too, Harry. And, okay. and this is crazy because she has this toy on, and I thought this would be a great angle. So in this whole metaverse thing 
right? From what I understand is, you know, people are going in the metaverse. I actually went to a a art uh, exhibit in the metaverse, Ooh. right? And um, you, you know, I put, you put the Oculus on and you sign in and you you get tickets. But there's people in the metaverse, and but what what I found out the history of the whole metaverse comes from porn first. Like people, you know, everything starts out as porn, and then it it, it it branches out to all these other genres. And so what happens is you, you, people are buying, like, uh, they, I went to a, a art gallery in the metaverse, uh, this young lady, Tanya um, um, Pinkman, who is an artist and she wrote, she's a, she's a director and she does film and she actually had these, these, she painted these paintings. She had the paintings re, re, uh, duplicated digitally in the metaverse and you walk around in the metaverse viewing the things, but then they had like an after party and they have a boom, boom room where, and they also like what hap what's happening now is people they, as soon as they get into the metaverse they get a they get a boyfriend or a girlfriend so they'll have these people that are married like a booty buddy yeah <laughs> like all, online booty buddy have you are you familiar with any of this at all um i actually stay away from like the super artificial stuff right. um where uh, i've actually never tried the metaverse um mm -hmm. i'm pretty much on like let's be human and let's go hang right. out in real life and, right uh but I, I've never been too much of a video game person, so I'm like stuck on TikTok. That's where I'm at. Right. Well, you know, it's it's interesting because I'm the same way. It's like I I think the 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 connection between people is really important. It's really important to me too. I mean, even if I mean, how long have you been an adult film star? It's literally been it's literally been ten years now. I started in 2019, uh -huh. so it's it's literally about to be about like ten one years. Uh, ten years because I started in September in 2019. Right. I mean, yeah, and and not 20, yeah, no, no, ten years ago. Now, did uh, 2009. You, did you start sorry, out doing? No, yeah. that's, 20. that's not, Sorry, that's 20. 2012. I think. 2012. No, 2013. 2013. Right. That's it. Okay. Sorry, there's some, a lot of numbers. It's, it's actually not really relevant, but it's right, been right. right. <laughs> did, did, now, did you start out doing girl, girl, and then move on to more stuff? Or, or how did you, what was your, your trajectory with that? Well, when I first got in, I was pretty like eager. And I was like, no, I want to get the D. I want right. to make sure. Because I was like really exploring myself because I really didn't have that many sexual partners. Right. I had boyfriends in high school, but. I think in porn, it kind of got me out of my comfort zone and got me to st try a lot of different things. I actually got contracted as soon as I got out in the industry because uh -huh. they, you know, they saw a hot piece, so they were like, "Yep, make right. sure you get all the all the all the scenes." So I got contracted with Brazzers. Um, and they have a bunch of like they're like a monopoly in porn. Right. They have a bunch of other companies that I shot with, but they're basically owned by the same person. Okay. By the same company, shell company. Right. So, so you, I saw a lot of those uh, films and I would feature dance a lot. So I would take a break from shooting and be able to go to different strip clubs and mingle with the fans, meet, um, dance, and then go back to shooting. So that's why it took like me like 10 years because I, would, I wouldn't be so consistent with it. Right. Um, I did like to meet my fans. So that's right. why I'm so excited to get back to the real world. I'm actually going to dance this weekend in Sacramento. Right. So that'll be like one of my first gigs back in the real world dancing. I've been to this club a bunch of times, so I know I'm excited to be there. Now, you, you so how old were you when you started? Oh, I was 19. Okay. So, wow. So I just turned 29. Um, right. Actually, it was just my birthday. Well, like, happy uh, like birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's still technically my birthday because it's like Aries season, so the whole, like, the cut. Mm. Right. Thank you so much. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, at night, I, so at 19, how many how many sexual partners did you think did you, did you have before you started doing porn? I mean, I started young, so I, I had, like, and I grew up in New York, so it was very easy to get, like, to meet people. They're like, <laughs> yeah, well, there's so it's many. Easy. And then, it's, you know, it's... Facebook and MySpace was still, like, just getting started, so it was easy just to uh, find different uh people you're interested in so i feel like i started like really young at 14 so um i had a boyfriend throughout high school mm -hmm. but i would cheat on him sometimes right 
but it was a. I feel like I lost track by by high school. I never really um, counted to tell you the truth. I literally think I did. I personally don't really think there is a problem with having a lot of. No, I'm not. Partners. I wasn't. I wasn't. Ju- <laughs> I wasn't judging it. I was just wondering no. to make that jump from to make that jump from where you say we got. I mean, through your own. Admission, you said that you know porn really got you out there where you t- started to explore yourself. Yeah, I was actually really shy also, and I really just needed to meet a lot of people and get out of my comfort zone. And I feel like that's what really pushed me out as a star because as soon as I got out of my comfort zone, I bl- I, I blossomed and um, a lot of different companies. I was a pet house pet. Um, I was a hustler, honey. Um, I also did Twisty Street. All the you know, all the accolades I got one by one. So it really felt my ego really well, fed my ego really well. And then after you know, after you do all, do all the things, you're like, oh, what else is there to do? <laughs> right. And th- is that how you got into the toy business? Yeah. Um, I well, the uh, the toy approached me in 2019, and they really. Um, they told me about this technology and I was super excited about um, and I felt like I really wanted a toy to connect with my fans somehow. Um, they, they they already know me so well, so why not actually finish right. the uh, uh, fill, fill in the actual gap? <laughs> you feel like you, the way you connect with your fans is different a little bit than the way other uh, actresses in the industry do because it seems important to you. To connect yeah, I feel like uh, we all should um, be connected and be happy with ourselves. So I really want to portray that with my fans to not seek it outside of themselves, seek it inside, and I could help you um, get get the confidence. Uh, if you like, subscribe to my OnlyFans. We chat, and I could help you get yourself feeling much more confident and much happier with yourself. Uh, and my attention helps with that. <laughs> mm. Let me uh let me ask you this uh is it uh is it difficult do you are you are you in a relationship now or no? No, I'm currently taking a break because my past relationships weren't um that good. Okay. <laughs> so right now I'm just taking a break. You know, uh, it's it's really hard to meet people right now. I'm not trying to like really be too social. I'm pretty I'm, I'm much of a homebody now. Well, when you say not too good, what do you mean? In what way? Well, you know, the social media aspect, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of predatory uh, men out there who mm. seek out, like, people like me who are nice and sweet, and I have, like, all the things, you know, I, I, I love to support myself, I'm very independent, so it's, like, the best thing for an uh, abusive man, because last, my last relationship was with a narcissist, and now I'm coming to terms with my own, like, mental health. Uh, and realizing a lot of stuff about myself for me seeking that kind of partner there's a lot of reasons uh as humans we we attract what we are right. we uh right. we basically are like magnets so if i'm attracting a narcissist a narcissistic personality that needs that needs to be looked at as in, in a mirror right. and seen so that's why i'm really like having i I mean, a midlife crisis, not really, not, not a midlife, because I'm not, right. it's not Yeah, because you're definitely not I'm midlife. I'm really going through, yeah. like, an identity, like, thing, because I'm really trying to connect with myself and my past self, because I've been ignoring a lot of my traumas. That's why I was easily prey for a narcissistic uh, personality, because mm. I am not, in t- I wasn't in tune with my, um, with, in my reality, basically, in tune with my, uh, emotional self i would just kind of like say eh, everything's okay like you know toxic positivity kind of vibe where you know mm. you don't really feel you just like keep going yeah. and i feel like that's a lot of people are in this kind of like list so you were uh, ignoring cycle. you were kind of ignoring clues and signs or indications that something is wrong with yourself or with the relationship and you're mm-hmm. just burying yourself in work so to speak or trying to keep you know trying not to stop and think about I mean, it before the quarantine before everything has shut down i would i would i would never even be home for, a, for over a week i would always be out uh, either working traveling always out and about partying a lot i was really in that big party stage the, the basically 10 years in my industry <laughs> me being in the industry i was very much of that party that fun girl like 
breaking the ice in every situation, making everyone kind of like being a people pleaser, basically always. What's your, so, what's your, uh, what's your, your, where you, where are you, you're from New York, but where are your parents I, and everybody? I grew your, up in New York, yeah, but I was born in Poland. Okay. And I grew up on the farm in Poland, so it's very small uh-huh. with small amount of like. There's not that the the small place the, population is small. Yeah, the population was very small. And then going to New York at seven, going to the big city, all right. the people and all the energy, it was a lot for a little child. And I didn't really cope with that. I just felt like I just pretended that everything was good for such a long time and I never really went back into like initially having such a culture shock is even a trauma like traveling all a lot of stuff I really never really coped with it so now I feel like I am more happy with myself and I am more present with myself because I am allowing myself to feel those feelings that I would constantly push down now are you your 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 parents still around on it they're still around or or what um since i did porn me and my parents never really had a i mean prior to porn i never really had a relationship with my parents they were constantly working you know new york is very expensive we lived in poverty right um and my dad was an alcoholic and he Mm. wasn't present so um that with that knowledge growing up i always felt I didn't realize. I didn't even realize recently. I really, I realized recently that I did not have a good childhood, and that's why a lot of my triggers are happening as an adult. Mm. Uh, but as to grow you up, you sound like you're tr- doing you're doing heavy therapy. Yes, <laughs> are you in yes, heavy? Yeah, I feel like I've been researching a lot, a lot of neuroscience. But are you? Are you? Do you go to therapy yourself? Or are you have? Yeah, yes. that's, that's 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 my goal. I, I've been trying to go at least once a week. Okay. Mm-hmm. How, what, so the ther- uh, oh, sorry. Where, ahead, where, it's, a, it's a great thing. Therapy is a great thing. So how do you? Sometimes people are very hesitant to accept that. Especially or in my industry, that. I know yeah. a lot of my friends that passed away recently. They there's a lot of suicide rates, and there's a lot of just girls not really going in that that, that feeling of not feeling like we're enough. And there's a there's this void that I know I've been feeling. So I know other people in my industry are feeling the same kind of void where, you know, we get put on this pedestal and we feel like we're superstars and that's feeding our ego really uh, constantly. And um, I feel that's also not that healthy for us. Right. And um, I actually, I feel like we need to step back and be able to have a conversation between all the girls and all the women in the industry and be more vulnerable with each other. So we don't have this competition, this constant, like, who's better, who's, mm-hmm. who's doing better than me. And that's how I always felt in my past relationships before I looked at myself, I was always in competition with my mm. friends. I would always see like, why is she doing so much better than me? Mm. But she's doing uh, anal and all this other stuff where I wasn't doing that kind of, those kind of scenes. And those kind of scenes shoot you to a different caliber of stardom. And I would be kind of comparing myself to that. And so it's always, I, I, I've i been stuck in this um, rotten, like, my mind state where I'm constantly judging myself and others and not um it's like um neglecting my own needs and mm. uh, not yeah. eating properly and you know I actually started eating healthy and putting good things in my body and that has been helping me with my uh relationship with my body with myself that's all a part of self love I think well okay so there's a few things that that you know um a few things that have kind of blaringly clear to me is number one is that I, I can see that you're doing heavy heavy work on yourself which is really dope it's really commendable that you're really trying to trying to figure this stuff out and then you also said that you know you realize now that you really didn't have a good you had a father that really wasn't present was your mom present at all or no well, she she had to pick up the pieces. Right. She had to work double. She had to work triple. She had to be out. And my sister also had high. Um, there was other like my other siblings also had mental issues, and they were older, so they took all the attention. How many? How and, many siblings? How many siblings is it? 
there's four in total, one younger and, and two others. And my older sister, you know, she was also did porn. And we also started, uh, we shot a lot of stuff together and we mm-hmm. used to feature dance together. So it has a lot to do with all so of that. So let me, let me ask you this. It's So it, one of the things that I think that you're talking about is is your own kind of mental health, right? Mm-hmm. But Yeah, I can't um, date anyone with my mental health. All, right, like. but do you also kind of take into consideration that at a time when you started doing porn, which was 19, that oh, I was, was in survival mode at that moment. Right. I was in a different mindset. I was in a low mindset. I was, I just wanted to get out at the point where I was living in a very like bad condition. Right. And this opportunity came up and it really felt like I, I, I mean, I saw the stardom, just the, the Jenna Jameson and all the like uh, amazing like attention I never got. And that really fed me for a while. Uh, but the, you know, after, you know, the attention dries up, you're, you're still chasing something. So then you're like doing drugs and partying and being, being all in that. So, I mean, I just needed to stop and make my, uh, re reassemble my relationships. I was, uh, I did ayahuasca actually in the beginning of 2020. And coming back home, integration was so hard because I was hanging out with people that didn't even know about the divine. They don't even, they don't, there's no concept for them. They're so materialistic in there. It was bringing me back into the like materialistic myself. Being the contrast not, of it. Yeah. So going, yeah. coming from this magical world where I met people that were like living like the way I want to live, like in tune with themselves, being, being community. And then coming back home and then coming back to the same people that I was in friends with where they weren't really my friends. They were just, we were just face holders for each other. Right. Um, we were just drug buddies. You know, well, we were party together. Yeah. Let but me, now let, I, I needed to get those people out of my life before I could clean myself well, up. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about this is that like, and I'm not a judgmental person at all, but when you're making, it's just like what you're talking about when you're talking about making relate, making decisions about relationships and you're really working on yourself to be a whole person and kind of understand who you are, where you are, and you grow. But you made a decision to do porn at 19 when you were all over the place and trying emotionally to emotionally immature as uh, well. As mo- right, so it's it's almost like you know when you doing this business is a difficult. It's a difficult business anyway. But it's an especially one of the things about this podcast is I'm I'm really good friends with Lainey. And, and to be really honest, plenty of times she has a lot of clients, right? She has a lot of porn clients that will, will come in. But I, and we used to we used to put them all on, but we don't anymore because for the most part, what happens is they have nothing to say. So when you're talking about this, these people are just placeholders for for whatever because you're trying to figure it out. One of the reasons why it's hard to be uh, it's so hard to try to heal yourself and try to look outside when other people are not doing that. It's kind of like make they make you look like the crazy one, the bad one for trying to trying to seek more. And but yeah, isn't it, isn't it difficult to do porn in the same process when you're? when you're trying to figure out i mean you're willing to say i don't need i don't want to be in a relationship right because i'm not i'm broken isn't it also difficult or is it difficult to separate that in terms of intimacy especially at 19 years old is is the thing that i'm getting at it's like here's a situation where you made this decision at 19 years old when you were basically running from home in kind of an emotionally abusive situation, if nothing else, not really, and really not having the maturity to even figure out how to move forward. With it. And then all of a sudden you put yourself in a position where, I mean, and because I, I, and like I said, there's no judgment, but a lot of, one of the reasons why we don't let a lot of porn stars come on the podcast is because they have nothing to stay the story is the same the the the, the story that they tell the same thing is it's such it's so lame for us that it's not even a good story because of the fact that they don't have and one of the reasons why we we had you on is because in terms of the research it's like you are literally a work in progress and you're more aware of things why it makes sense to have these conversations because i don't care if you if you 
do anal or you don't ain't do anal. I don't care that you were, I was really sexual when I was a kid. I had big boobs and then I, I like to fuck and now I make money. I, that, that, that story doesn't help my listeners at all. What helps my listeners is the fact that there's a, there's a, an awareness, there's a mental and an emotional awareness where somebody is doing the work to, to be on this journey to be emotionally healthy. But I can't deny the fact that you made a decision under duress to do porn, literally separating, I don't know if you're still, I mean, I know you're still close with your sisters, but I don't know what the situation with your brothers and your sisters and how this comes in. And you're trying to find this kind of, um, like strong footing emotionally, but in the process, the people around you the people in porn, I mean, people in general are sick, but people in porn are really sick because there's, there's this, there, it, there's this delusion, under, there's delusion, there's this idea of the fact that there's a whole group of people, we're all cool, we're cooler than everybody else because they don't get it and we're free with our sexuality when is when for the most part, most of them are broken. Most of them have, and, and a lot of them are not even smart enough to even discuss what what you're saying now. Which is which is really, I love the fact that you're having this discussion. But you have, but I could tell that you're having this discussion in your own mind. That's like this is you healing yourself. How do you rectify the fact that you're still doing a business that? is where you have to separate this intimacy and just make this a job where traditionally we don't see that when you started at 19 years old and then you're around a bunch of you know dirt bags and i'm, I'm not saying mm -hmm. all of them but it's a lot mm -hmm. of dirt no, bags 95 like percent of them are, and and the know? people and the men that are interested in this and in, interested in you 95 percent of them are predatory not to yeah. say that men are mm -hmm. not predatory in general but in the porn business, the fact that this I can is... tell you, every one of my friends has been in the kind of relationship, in a predatory relationship. We all are in this vulnerable state where we haven't healed our childhood traumas. And right. We all are like, we're these islands. We're just all seeking, like we're trying to find help, but we, we are all just so stubborn, you know? Right. I mean, at, at that point, at 19, uh, I thought I was ruling the world. I had this grandiose thought. I, you know, I had this greatest idea of my life. Um, but you know, I, I was emotionally damaged. I was emotionally immature, and I was under a controlling relationship where a psychopath, uh, where it, he would like um, initially it would it was it was his idea, but it was it was put into mine as it mm. would be my idea. But I I, I had to see that for myself and then take the the uh, the loss and realize that i can uh empower myself and take this industry and try to change a little bit try to heal so we could get more humanized and the porn industry as the women we we don't get put on this pedestal we are the same we are human we are we are all having a journey we're all having an experience and we're all trying to heal we're all trying to uh, be the best versions of ourselves but trauma trauma makes us crazy and right. Well, like, but I mean, like, I'm, I guess what I'm saying also is that, it, it, you know, you could you be... You have to be emotionally mature enough to even look at, like, the patterns, you know. I be, I dated the same kind of guy five, six times already, you know. When am I going to, like, hey, when are you going to be like, hey, the same pattern, the same emotionally unavailable person is keep coming into your life. It's just... Now, why, why do you think you figure this out where other people continue that pattern? What made you discover this or that, that you need the help <laughs> she's well, smarter she's just yeah. smarter <laughs> i i mean i did a lot of psychedelics and all right there's that. i used to That'll party help. with them and like we i my first time doing it with our work with my friends we were we did it at disney we had the best time and it was great for like how many times and then i had my bad trip and then my another bad trip so then i stopped and then I actually got into a toxic relationship in Bali because I went to travel to do a content trip with my girlfriends with like six of us. And we went to travel over there to just have a great time. And but one of my friends brought one of her friends who lived in Bali and he was really 
he was there to party. So we partied really hard and we, I basically, we got enmeshed and I literally basically moved to Bali for six months in 2019 it was amazing, but it, I was like, I was in this beautiful place, but I felt like I was stuck in a cage because he was emotionally available and I'd keep chasing the high of like, let's connect, let's connect. But there's this wall and like, it literally broke me at one point where I had an emotional breakdown and I like, it was, it was scary for me. And I, I finally left and then we kind of broke up, but you know, we don't learn our lessons. So then I went back and, uh, I actually was supposed to feature dance in Australia. And I, this was the beginning of March in 2020. So it was the beginning of the quarantine, basically. So uh, I had to fly to Australia. The universe lined it up perfectly because he was actually hosting an ayahuasca retreat over there because that's what he does. He does ayahuasca like uh, retreats for stuff mm. for like uh, people that are trying to heal. But I didn't really know about that part of like, I didn't really know what ayahuasca was, mm. but I ended up doing the ceremony and it was life changing. Um, I saw a lot of different patterns and it like, it literally sucked like the poison out of me. I felt like it, it cleansed me so much. Like I had my eyes closed and like, like, like a, like a machine scan, like a, like a fax machine. That's mm -hmm. how I felt like she pulled all my negative energy. And then the next day, like you could see how much smiles I had. My skin was more vibrant. My colors came back. I the life came back into my body, basically. So it was a heavy dose of psychedelics that got me to like be questioning myself, even because at that point I still didn't understand. I was traumatized. I still didn't understand. I had a bad childhood. I still, I was still in this delusion. So when I after coming home and doing the ceremony and coming back to America. Mm. I actually, um, we, my friend called me and we went to, the, we went to Tulum <laughs> and we stayed in Tulum and we partied in Tulum and I went straight back into my toxic patterns of like hanging out with people that literally don't care about me. They're just there just to party. And I went back to the same patterns and I'm like, Oh, 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 I, I was like, well, let me, I just, geez. I think my, the question I'm asking is that when it comes Sorry, to relation just... and when it comes to relationships, you say, yeah. you say that you have moved, pulled back from relationships. So to kind of get your footing, but to the same token in doing porn is still something that can... I haven't shot porn since 2019. Okay. I just shoot for my only fans and, uh, I just keep up with my with my person with, my with your fans, fans and the, stuff like that. that so, that okay, just, okay. So, so that you have personal. you've taken a break from that to kind of clear your head on all, but you still it, this is the way you make a living, and so you do it through your OnlyFans and and as you clear your head. Yes, and I'm, I'm I really want to figure out a way where I could uh, have a, a clear conscience and do it. But you know, right now I I have I still have that inner inner battle. What is the battle? What's the battle? Um, like I I I still see myself as shameful for doing it because that's what was projected to me as a child was shame, and that's where the the conscious level I live in the conscious, like a lot of people. That's why um I attracted a narcissist. Another narcissist is living in their core shame like that's their core hurt is the shame so we attract each other and um and so like i start feeling that in grief for my shape uh, for the shame i have and uh, no matter what i do it's still gonna trigger me well um, the, well i think too the part of it is that the the shame comes from the fact that you weren't really whole in the first place when you started doing porn in the first place. So if you had if you had done this work right and said oh, at that time, at right, 2019, you, which is I would have, I wasn't mentally ready. Yeah, you were. Yeah, I, I, wish. I, 
I get that, but you, you get into this situation where there's trauma, there's abuse, and you're running away from home, and then you pick this choice that gives you, basically gives you the ego boost, is stroking your oh, ego yeah. a bit, and, and then, but, but, oh, yeah. and this is the thing, this is the thing with, with a lot of, like what I was saying is, we don't allow a lot of porn people to come on because it's, it's just a waste of time to talk to porn stars when they have nothing to say other than the typical thing, whereas your story is really different. And had like, so, but when you find somebody who has the maturity to kind of fix who they are and they're, and they're making, they're going into, because I don't think that anybody should judge anybody, but the point being is you, you, you also. It's like a core, it's like a core, your, your core programming. It's like that the subconscious tape I have is, uh, it's. It's very bad because where the way I grew up, my father would yell and scream and beat and would like he would physically harm me. So my I know like my trauma is that there's like the subconscious tape that's playing through that because when we are growing up from one through seven, we have the most um, like nerve like the most neuroplasticity our, right, group, our brain and, yeah yeah we're like a big we're basically a sponge yeah. and i know during that time my life was in like shit, shit. fucking you know shit yeah. so um i can't fucking you know put a, a, a throw glitter on it and make it right. gold right you know? still it's shit and then you're putting you know you, you know you're putting you're glitter, putting glitter on, on shit the, it's still but, shit you know yeah but the point the point too is that if you if you fix these things and then you make a you make a, a decision okay porn is what i want to p- right but por- porn is what i want to do in terms of my personal expression moreover than not you don't very rarely do you have porn stars who go I'm a, I'm a whole person and I've done the therapy and I've fixed my trauma and I want to make this, I, this is what I want to do because I'm whole and this is what I want to do. It's, I'm a it's sexual a, being, you know, I, that's, I, that's my person. That's who I am, you know. I but can. we all are. We all are sexual beings. The, 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 the problem well, I is I have that, more comfort in that, in that department. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. I kind of have a lot of comfort in that department well, myself. But. Dante does. I mean, <laughs> Dante, I mean, to give her a little bit of your CV, uh, I guess. <laughs> Dante was a male stripper for many years, right? An exotic dancer, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and Dante also. Well, I'll, I'll you give your CV. I, don't I mean, I was, I was, I was actually a, a pimp. Uh, I was actually a pimp for six years, and that, and 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 it's something. And what I was ultimate? A whole for a while too, but I, I gave up that life. Well, the like, the whole thing for, is too that you get to the point where your growth. Your growth says to you that ethically I'm not comfortable with this and because I'm not comfortable, Mm -hmm. not to say that the business doesn't go on without you, but ultimately you you don't want to participate in it. And so what's what's it what I think is really difficult is the fact that you we you moreover than not, porn stars make these decisions from the from from trauma from fear from and fear from, trauma and, and from trauma scarcity. and then and so the decision that they're made is not a decision made from a from a i mean for lack of a better word is from a sane perspective it's based on the trauma we're reacting from the trauma and then you're getting into this and so it's a it's a weird and then you have so many people around you who who are in that same trauma, and so it, it gives a normalization of this kind of trauma because everybody, <laughs> oh, this is how everybody is. Oh, yeah, my mom. I mean, was was your relationship, was he abusive? Was he physically abusive as well? Yeah, it was yeah. physical, it was emotional, it was yeah. psychological. It was, all the, it was all the things, you know, where it makes you programmed to be a slave, basically. Yeah. It programs your subconscious to be a yes man, or just saying yes to everything because you are not a whole person, so you don't know how to fill your own needs because you, you were always there to... To fill it, to, you're, a, you're an object to fulfill everything. I was parenting every- my, my, my dad, I was parenting my sister, I was... Right doing the opposite job at the at where i needed the parenting you know and right. i needed the love and i needed the affection you know i didn't really get any of that and just realizing that i'm just the whole of my whole like existence is a, existence is a trauma response right and just mm. to like that, that i came into that conclusion like driving the other day to my yoga studio and i really and, loved and would yoga. you say that including your choice to do porn 
was yeah, a, was yeah. a reaction of, of yeah. So so do you think you you would have chosen this career at all if it wasn't for that trauma? If I didn't, uh, if I got, if I had the right parenting, if I had the right skills, the right coping skills, the right thinking, like uh, I was just, I wasn't raised. I was there yeah. growing up yeah. by myself, you right. know, wandering the, Trying hood, to figure it wandering out. the streets, just right. being with my friends, you know, going over to sleeping over my friends' houses, being the hobo, like friend, like going over because I didn't want to stay in my, my house because it was so terrible. So I would just find friends and I would be with them. All right. So this so is good for people uh, with kids to hear. Hey, uh, it makes a difference. It makes better be there. You better be there if you don't want your little girl on film. You know, a decade from now. It takes, there's a there's yeah. a war on our on our kids, on the generation, on our youth, on 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 on. There's a subconscious war that we're losing as a society. As a as we are we are not here helping young women who were traumatized, who had psychological issues. That we are just traumatizing them more and then having them go into this industry where it's like a doggy dog and you're constantly fucking in a um like in a like sub- submissive like mm. position because you're scared but there, there's no like hey maybe we should before the girl starts shooting maybe we should have her evaluated related maybe yeah. she should try to talk to a therapist and yeah. see if there's other ways yeah, than but, before but, I mean, but to be to, but you gotta tell you oh, gotta understand the whole i know pro- i wasn't there present at the time if but no but i'm saying the, therapy, the whole, i would have been like fuck you that's but the whole therapy sucks but the, therapy but the, for the problem the reason why they don't do that is because it is a predatory business mm-hmm. it yeah, is the, and the point i want to show like the other girls in the younger in the, like the younger that I want to show them through my experience that it, it wasn't just fucking butterflies and rainbows. It was fucking shit. It was traumatizing. I, yeah. I would cry a lot and it would, it would be very tormenting, you know? Um, it, it's not just, Oh, I'm making a lot of money and yay, I'm happy. But like you're attracting people you're that are basically yeah. your friends who just want to take your money. I only had fake friends yeah. who like, because I'm a, I'm a generous person. I'm a nice person. And that's a part of my trauma being like overly, Nice, man. Mm. Nice is like not a good word, but like that's that was my no, nice. Nice is a, nice is a good is a great word. The problem is the when people you're around you have, nice, when you're pe- you know? around people who take from you. What one of the things that I you know I talk about a lot of times is uh, that, and I've even counseled people on this. It's like you as a when you're especially like when you're a, a child, you go through this trauma. And you have this trauma, and you have to learn you how blame to cope. yourself. And you and you have to learn how to cope. And so, if you you know if this trauma is happening when you're eight years old or six years old or it's, uh, whenever you you're cognitive of it, you you're not gonna. I mean, well, some people do commit suicide, but if you don't commit suicide, what you do is you take the knowledge that you have as an eight year old, and you come up with a strategy to 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 move forward. But you don't know anything at eight what years eight, old. What can an eight year old like know anything exactly? You're, you, it's, it's, right. So it, the the solution really is sad. the solution is so is so uh, is so in, inadequate because of the fact that you don't have enough life experience to even navigate this. So at eight years old, you blame yourself. You go, I'm not loved, and whatever. And so that as you get older, you're looking for these accolades. You're looking for this ego boost, which is a short-term validation of who you are as a human being. The problem is, and 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 you said you you're uh, you're 29 now, yes? Oh yeah. 29. So you're 29 now, but what happens is now you're fir- is the first time you're really looking at the solution that you had about the trauma, which was, you, I mean, we, we, we have the trauma, we figure out, okay, this is the strategy for us to survive so that we don't kill ourselves. And then we don't, as we gain information, we don't re, we don't reinvent a, a, a solution to deal with the trauma, even though that we're more sophisticated, we're more intelligent, we have more experience. It doesn't occur to people that it they have to think update that, you have that to, system. That you have to reassess. Yeah, like a computer, you know? Right, yeah. you have to reassess, you got to update. Imagine the, running it, your computer on a Windows 98 software. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're doing emotionally. 
and you know, so you're you making these the decisions yeah. that don't yeah. fit, that don't work, that don't, and 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 you never think to because you're so comfortable with the trauma you're that wrapped you wrapped up in the world, you know, right? You don't the, even go startup. maybe maybe I should do something a little bit different, which I think is really dope. Even the fact that you're recognizing, the, I mean, it's just I want to say this to you, and I and you know I don't know, just the the hearing you talk is a refreshing thing to hear the fact that you you are recognizing this trauma and making an effort to change and the fact that and not you don't know me and I don't know you but man I'm proud of you that you're on this journey I mean it's just really a a, a different and a really dope thing to do to be able to separate yourself and I and you're even admit you're even honest about the fact that you're falling victim to these same patterns and stuff but I really feel like because of the fact that you've done you you're doing the work um that you're gonna get there like I know I believe like it's just yeah. dope that I believe you're gonna get there and you're gonna understand and when you get there the decisions that you make are gonna be way different than the decisions that you made at 19. I don't even I, I I don't even know if you would even ever go back to it, especially because I know that with OnlyFans, people can kind of do. You're not being you you can do what you want to do. Your control over it. You're, you're yeah. in control over it. Yeah, and so you can, you and and the funny thing is, I'm gonna tell you something that I recognized when you first started talking. You were talking about, you weren't talking about, oh, I go on my OnlyFans and I'm fucking my ass with a dildo. You, what you mentioned was I can talk to people about their confidence. And so, like, you want to help people, even though your fans are looking at you in this sexual way. The thing that you didn't talk about, none of the sexuality of it. what you talked about is these are people I want to connect with my fans. I want the I want to help them. I want to help them with their trauma, which is just an, an amazing kind of really commendable thing that I want. I don't know if anybody said that to you, but man, it's just it's it's really good to see that you're working just to be this, you know, to maintain the goodness that's in you and I guarantee you that you're going to make different decisions. There's no way you can do the work that you're doing and not do better. Do you know? I mean, one of the things that we talk about this podcast is all the time is being the best version of yourself and recognizing that it doesn't come easy, that it's a, there's a lot of work that needs to be put in place, and that even in the work that you put, understanding that you're going to fall back and you're going to make mistakes and you got to get up yeah. and then and keep moving forward. But it's it's really, really refreshing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what you think about it, Harry, it's but like I mean, two it's steps just, front, one foot, yeah. one step back. Well, <laughs> I'll say this, uh, you know, you're still in the middle of your journey and it's an intense journey and you can kind of feel that with the way you talk about it. But the, the thing that I found interesting and not that I have a similar journey, but we all have our bits of trauma uh, it's still even in the process of trying things and being frustrated as you try them. That is still a better feeling than not knowing what's going on yeah. and being completely lost. So even the difficult journey where you are taking, you know, one step forward, uh, two steps forward, one step back, that is still a better feeling than being completely lost and not knowing what to do, you know, mm -hmm. and th that's the amazing part of it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you can't change the past, but it's definitely got to feel better than just kind of being lost. Would, would you say that is fair? Yeah, I had to slow down and really be present with myself and get comfortable with my own emotions and my own feelings before all that stuff could have came up, you know, from my to, from my awareness to even pick it up. It, I had to a, get myself in a, a comfort. It, here's comfort a question I like to ask you is, being someone who started from 19 years old, and, and at 19 you can do porn at 19, in your opinion, how how old should you be before you I think can at drink? least 21 because if we could drink alcohol at 21 and uh, and you have if to you drink, alcohol drink alcohol when you're 21 yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah and but you could you could have sex on camera that sounds no we should we should have it the same age as 21 no i get it i get the point of you saying okay if you can go to war or if you can go you can drink at 21 or whatever but i'm saying from you're somebody who is 
who has gone through this trauma, who has went ran. I mean, when you even when you map this out, what you're doing is mapping out the fact that you didn't even have the ability to like you honestly didn't have the ability to make these decisions about porn until when like i mean at what age were you when you were like well i can well even better i don't even have to ask that because at what is it you said you haven't you haven't done you haven't actually done any shoots and stuff in how long now since 2019. okay so so almost three years so it took you at least 26 before you could even go well whoa 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 wait a minute this is this and I, and I and I and I consider you way more insightful than 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 other porn stars that I've had on the show and stuff. So do, do you understand what I'm asking? I'm asking you at a real place. I mean, you can't put an age on because maturity doesn't always uh, doesn't always um, coincide with 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 age. But you didn't really get it together in your head until 26. I mean, I'm still getting it together now, right, right. you know. But I mean, um, you didn't even make a decision. Well, maybe I need to fucking chill and... You know, the thing is, it was an opportunity I got. The Snapchat, um, like online, the online doing it at your phone really took over, off at that time. So I really mm -hmm. didn't have to. I could, I could make the same amount of money from my phone than from going on set. So then I just became... Because we would... They wouldn't take care of us at, at the movie right. shooting for so long. We'll right. be on set all, all day. Well, I could be out on my phone for 15 minutes and make the same amount of money. How is the, how is the industry dealing with that now? Well, right now they're like really struggling. Um, yeah, as they should not be that because much quality. It's, it's so predatory. They should be struggling. It's dirtbag shit, and I'm and it's it's because as a I'm a stand you know Ari and I are both stand up comedians, and for yeah. years we've. You know, but comedians and porn stars have a lot of similar. Absolutely, trauma, like very much similar, so. Yeah, like, yeah. We want to be the star. We want to. That's right. why the stage is so nice because it's like we feed our ego because everyone right. laughs at us. And right. They clap. Right. <laughs> I exactly. was like a little but, funny. But, but the same, the same kidding. thing is true. The same thing is true with the gatekeepers because mm -hmm. for so long, Comedy Central, this person, that person, people who were not even in, didn't do porn, weren't creative. They were making the they make the decisions about who does what, who gets the and movies, who gets, who gets famous. Yeah. Right. And and the reality is because of the internet, it's just like what you're saying now with the internet, we go straight to the customer. And the customer supports There's no middleman no more. Right. And so they're starving. I mean, Co Comedy Central when it's going, they're going bankrupt. Everything is online. They don't. They, you know, it's all the models are changing, and the models are changing. I, I know that they never. Which I'm happy as hell. The fact that because it was just such. Not only that, but I mean, it, 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 even with um, we had a a, a dude. Uh, what's the dude? There was this guy Jeff Singer who was one of those gatekeepers who ended up being predatory, sexually predatory to female comics because he had that okay and then didn't got you and he and he, and because of that um he uh he he got ousted from the position and now he's no longer like he's like a Weinstein now you yeah, know he's blacklisted he's blacklisted and can't do it because of his thing real quick i want to let, let but me there's close. also like very famous directors in our industry who are like uh, like these uh, amazing ones where they would be paired totally in the beginning with the girls would have the guy the director would pull the girl try to get a blow job after the scene mm -hmm. and that's very and that that happens even in porn industry you're already right. selling your sex and then after you're selling your sex there's another fucking guy expecting sex from you right and right. it's just like well, hold it's on to that. I, I want you to. I want you to plug your plug your toy and your Instagram and your OnlyFans. I don't know people are gonna want to buy my toy after all my trauma. No, I I think they want to buy it even more because there's a truth to that that makes you endearing. I mean, I think that's the other thing about. Well, let's let me plug your stuff and then we're gonna do a little time yeah. on the and the the Patreon behind the scenes. Okay, Perfect. so tell me whatever well, you want to plug your Instagram, your your whatever you want to plug. My Instagram is Natalia Land X, and I have another one. It's a backup Natalia X star, just in case because you know I get banned. Yeah, I, no, I was banned last year. It's um, Instagram. I have this amazing toy. So if you want to connect more endearingly with me, you can buy this amazing toy. Uh, what, how do they find it? Com. 
Uh, I'll give that one more time. I I hero K I I R O two eyes K I I R O. Okay. <laughs> My accent. Hero. Um, yeah, and you can buy the launch that will connect you to your lover or to me or to like make it more personalized. You could do um, also VHR and that uh, metaverse stuff. Yeah. yeah. Definitely with this. And I'm actually going to be in Sacramento dancing in Gold's Club, uh, Centerfold. Uh, Gold Club Centerfold this weekend. Mm. Good. <laughs> so that's Thanks. my live. Okay. Live me. All right, Harry, talk to me real quick. Uh, all my stuff is uh, at Harry Turjanian. That's my social media, uh, especially the TikTok is where I'm posting most of my comedy stuff nowadays. Uh, and also uh, follow us at uh, patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we're doing the bonus content. And we're going to continue talking with the lovely Natalia Star, who uh, I think after this conversation, people are actually even more endeared to. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, we'll talk Not about that too. Uh, everything for me, the Dante Nero. Google, Google me. Um, <laughs> don't forget the one-on-one consultations at uh, DanteNero.com. Uh, click on consult. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all, man. Don't forget to sign up for the Patreon. Check out the YouTube, Man School 202, uh, my Instagram, everything else. I love y'all. Check us out on the Patreon.